I'm sure by now you've seen those super popular videos where they take a Reddit post, screenshot some interesting replies, voice it over with a robot, and then throw it over some Minecraft gameplay. They give me bone pain, but it got me thinking, I bet I could do that in a way that isn't a soul draining nightmare. We can just automate it with Python. Once I learned how to use Python, cause I, I don't know how to use it. The first thing we need to do is choose a post from Reddit. Now, if I was doing this without code, I would open up a web browser and go to Reddit's URL. The browser would then send a request to a server somewhere, and that would return a bunch of files for the browser to display. Now, you can do the exact same thing with Python. However, the data we actually want, like the post title and the comments, would be kind of buried within the files that get returned. You could design a way to parse through these files, but if Reddit were to ever change their website layout, it could break our code. A better approach would be if we could just send a request to Reddit servers and just get back the content we care about in an easy to read format. This is exactly what an API does. We can send a request to Reddit's API in a pretty similar way that our web browser does, and it'll return content as a JSON file. JSON is great because all the data is listed as a key value pair, so it's a lot easier to work with. To make things even easier, we can also use a handy library called Pra. This is a wrapper in Python specifically for Reddit's API, so instead of sending a request like this, we can just call a Python method. To use Pra, first we get a Reddit instance. Uh, this handles some basic setup, like telling the API who we are with an ID and a password, and I got these from registering on Reddit's website to set up an API application. Once we have this, we can tell it which subreddit we're wanting to use. In this case, we're using Ask Reddit. And then we also tell it that we want the top posts in the last day, and we want three results. If we go to the pro documentation, we can actually see the structure of the JSON object that gets returned when we ask for a list of posts. So each post, or submission as they call it, has all of this data along with a unique post ID. We can use this ID to make sure we haven't already made a video on the specific post, and then we can also use the over 18 flag, for example, to skip over any NSFW post. Once we've chosen a post, we can then move on to grabbing specific comments. The submission data that we get back includes a comments field as a comment forest object, and this contains all the comments left on the post. To pick comments, all we do is search through this list of comments, and I chose to not pick anything that was over 100 words, and then we can grab the comment, we can get a comment ID from that, along with the actual text of the comment. So, once we have all that, we can send it to a package called PYTT... P, P, it's Python text to speech X3. It's a stupid abbreviated name. So all we have to do with that is initialize it. We give it a file name that we just create from the common ID. And then we give it the text that we actually want to voice over. So when we run that, we get an MP3. Now we're done with the audio. Next, we need to grab some screenshots of the title of the post along with each of the comments that we use in our video. Since we stored the URL of the post from the original submission call, we can use another tool called Selenium to get screenshots. Selenium is an automated test tool, but it's really handy for controlling a web browser with code. First thing, we open up Firefox with the URL that we stored from before. You can use whatever browser you want, but Firefox tends to be best for capturing screenshots, and I tested things like Chrome, it didn't quite work as consistently. So then we need to identify which parts of the screen we actually want to take a picture of. Web pages are really just a bunch of rectangles layered on top of each other, so we can use that developer console to see underlying HTML. Uh, we look for divs, which are just rectangles that we want a screenshot of, and this may look really confusing, but we can ignore most of this and use this tool right here to just highlight the section we want and then find the div. Now that we've found the div for the post title, we need to find a unique handle to tell the code how to find this. A handle is just a class or an ID attribute that's specific to the element. This has a class post and it only occurs once on the page, so that's gonna work perfect. To take screenshots of each of the comments, it's gonna be a little trickier because we need specific comments and there's a lot of them shown per page. However, if we remember the comment ID that we got from our submission and we look at the HTML, we can actually match and see that the comment ID is listed here with an ID that starts with T1 underscore and then the comment ID. So we can use that information to act as our handle. Now that we have those, it's really complicated to get a picture. That's it. Now we have PNG files for our title and all of our comments. The last thing to do is edit the video together. And you guessed it, we're going to be using another tool, this time called MoviePy. MoviePy organizes videos into different video clip objects, and that might seem familiar if you've used video editing software before. We start by creating an image clip object with the screenshot file for the post title. 
Then we make an audio clip with the voiceover file we made earlier, and we set the audio for the image clip to use that new audio clip. We'll repeat the process for each of the comments, and then we'll take all the clips that we just made and concatenate them together, which is just an annoying word for linking them one after the other. Finally, we need to add the background gameplay. For that, I pre-recorded some gameplay from various games and I exported it to already be in the correct vertical ratio. Now we just randomly choose one of those MP4s from this folder I made and import that into a video clip object. Finally, we combine both of the video clip that contains the gameplay we need and that concatenated list of all of our content into a composite video clip and that allows us to do picture in picture effects. The very last thing to do is specify the output file location and a few video settings, then we just call the render function. Now we have a complete mp4 at the push of a button. Originally I also plan to make this upload to YouTube automatically, and there's several ways you can approach that. The cleanest would be using the YouTube API in a similar way that we use Reddit's API. However, after trying this approach, I ran into an issue. YouTube requires you to submit an approval application before you can get full access to its API. Otherwise, you can only upload videos as private and they're locked from ever being changed to public, which totally defeats the point for me. I was too lazy to get approval, so instead you could use that Selenium tool from earlier to upload videos. You just need to tell it which page to go to, how to click the upload button, then drag and drop your video, and someone already did that. I ended up not using this and just uploading them manually, but using this package, it is totally possible to automate this step. So, overall this took me several days to get working, but now it only takes literally a few minutes to create an interesting-ish video. And to test this, I made a brand new YouTube channel, along with some very creative artwork, and I started posting these as shorts. I didn't get many views starting out, uh, but after a few days I kind of found the right time to upload, and they really took off. After just one week of uploading roughly once a day, I had over 28,000 views, and 28 subscribers. It wasn't great, but the views I think were really impressive. Now, the last issue we have is a bit of an ethical one over the fact that we're basically just stealing people's ideas from Reddit and then potentially profiting off them without any permission. And to solve this, we can just 